Zook. This is my husband, Jason Zook, and we run Wandering Aimfully, which is an onboarding coaching program for intentional online business owners. We are traveling full-time in Europe this year, taking you along with us, and this is our little series from Scotland. That's right. So last video, we took you to one of our favorite places, which was Dunatar Castle. But this video is for all of you foodies out there. We love to eat, and this is three of our favorite restaurants that we ate at while we were in Scotland. Okay, if you watched our last video, you'll know that we're trying out a new format. Mm -hmm. We have named it Khaki Keywords. Because khaki hat, khaki keywords. That's right. Also, in the last video, we did say comment below with your better name, and we realized that we're filming these a little bit before advance, it'll yeah. come out. So anyway, keep giving us your suggestions, in the comments, and we'll, we'll change the for name. Sure. All right, so we have a bunch of different topics we want to discuss from our first restaurant, which is the Glen Turret Distillery. But, uh, we have one Hello. topic that we need to start with to kind of set the stage. That's right. Okay, so the keyword is distillery. Mm -hmm. So, Jason, tell them about the Glen Turret Distillery and restaurant, the Lalique restaurant at the Glen Tillet Distillery. I think what you're Glen meaning. Tillet Distillery. Okay, it's the Glen Turret Distillery. I think what you're meaning to say is the oldest working distillery in Scotland. That's right. You haven't said that yet, and that's an important fact. Very important. Which is very fun. Uh, we really enjoyed the grounds of the mm. distillery. Uh, I think we went on a Saturday and it wasn't that busy, which was really nice. Mm -mm. We just get to walk around. We didn't do like a full tour of the distillery. We didn't go in and watch them like put things in barrels and do all that. That's great. We've done that in different occasions. But we did walk around outside. There's a lot of lovely little areas, a lot of barrels hanging around outside and just a very nice place. And now you might be wondering, didn't you say you were visiting three restaurants? And the thing is, yes, we are because there's a new restaurant at the Glen Turret Distillery called the Lily mm -hmm. Restaurant at the distillery. And so unfortunately, we weren't able to get a reservation for lunch or dinner at the restaurant, but here's a little life hack. They did have a spot open on a Saturday for the whiskey flight tasting, mm. which is at the bar inside the restaurant. Turns out you can get some food there too, so that's a little hack. If you can't get a reservation, book the whiskey flight. All right, if there you're new go. here, the way we play this is we just have some keywords to tell you about the experience at the restaurant, because it's more fun than just telling you the story. Just I'll go first. Regular. Okay, go. <laughs> All right, my first keyword is staff. <sighs> This is a good place to start. So the staff is one of the things that when you're doing a kind of meal at a bar, you're going to interact a lot more with multiple people than you will if you just sit at a table and you have one server. You have the person making the drinks, you have the bar hands, you have the front of house manager. Like we got to meet all yeah. of the people, which was my absolute favorite part. And to make it even better, everyone who works at the Lalique is from all different places across Europe. So at first I was like, oh, you do not have a Scottish accent. <laughs> And then I realized very quickly that in the hospitality industry, you're coming from all over. So we yeah. had friends from Germany. Yeah. We had friends from Spain. We had friends from Malta. Yeah, Jason from Malta. Jason from fact, Malta was our I'm not mixologist. From Malta. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was just really fun to interact with people. And I think just being able to sit in a place that feels you know, a little bit uncomfortable. Like you're sitting in a bar, you're kind of like looking at everyone's at tables and then everyone's just so friendly. You're like, yeah, this is great. This is such a vibe. So we really enjoyed all of the staff. Next khaki keyword for the lady. All right. Let's go with <clears throat> cocktails. Mm. Okay, so here's the coolest thing about the Whiskey Flight experience is when you sit down at the bar, they give you a menu and you can pick from different flights. So they have one that's just like their traditional, I think they call it the, what's the word for three? I don't know, we're not gonna remember all the, the names, but yeah, it's just the triad three, three of the, different whiskeys. That's right, or you have the historical, which we'll talk about. But I did the cocktail flight, which I didn't even know was gonna be an option. Whiskey is not my spirit of choice, let's say, Perhaps I drank too much of it in college and I still have memories that come rushing back that aren't pleasant. But uh, seeing that there was a cocktail list, I was like, oh, this is for me. And let me just tell you, these cocktails were unbelievable. Well, yeah, you had an old fashioned, which you never I enjoyed, would never. especially because bitters is not your favorite thing, yeah. but you really enjoyed the old fashioned. Everything was just, all the ingredients were so well considered. And Jason from Malta was taking us through all of the different syrups and little mixers and all the things that they lovingly craft to put into these cocktails. And let me tell you, it makes a difference. Like this, one, I think was the first experience where I really understood mixology as like an art form. Yeah. And it just made me appreciate the people who really this is their craft and this is their passion. Yeah. Khaki keywords. I have for us next historical. Wow, mm, that was well perfect. well laid out there. 
You can have that. Uh, so I did the historical flight of whiskeys. So as Caroline was mentioning, there's a couple different options. And I just decided to go with something where I'm gonna get some whiskeys that are a bit older, have a bit more story to them, probably a bit more depth of flavor. Mm -hmm. I'm not normally a huge whiskey drinker. I do love tequila and we love trying different types of tequilas, reposados and yejos, even some blancos can be really delicious. And so this was a great way to kind of get that version of what we've had before in different tastings. So I really loved it. Uh, by the end of it, I was only supposed to have three. I think I ended up trying six different whiskeys. It was so fun. It was and, just and really fun. And you really enjoyed taking a sip of one and then kind of comparing it to the others, yeah. which I thought was a really fun part of the experience. I took a few sips. Though. They also had just very different flavors. And then we ended up getting some food, which we'll talk about as well. And then you would have a sip of something like, oh, wow, that has a whole different range of flavors now too. So just very, very fun, very, uh, delicious, but also at the same time, you're like, I'm drinking a lot of whiskey here. There's only one in here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing a random category as well for these. And the keyword I wrote down is your signature drink. So what would your signature drink be called? That's what I wanted to know. Oh. You name your signature drink. What oh, would it be? It would be called Clumsy Crafty Happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's my first blog I ever yeah, started. Yeah, yeah. I love but it. I think it fits. I think it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mine would be... Maybe like the clumsy crafter. Or it has to have a pun in it. Oh, okay. Okay, you go and I'll think of a pun. Be careful. <laughs> that would be mine, because I'm clumsy. Yours. And so also just, like, don't drink too many. Yeah, you know? be, and it's strong. I'm not even gonna pick one. We're just gonna go with be, be careful, careful, because I be think careful. that's the right one to pick. It's like a warning and a drink. Yeah. Lalique restaurant at the Glen Turret Distillery. Let's move over to our second restaurant, which is Andrew Fairley, mm -hmm. which is at the Glen Eagles Hotel. It is a two Michelin star restaurant. This is the first time we have ever eaten at a two Michelin star. We promise not all of our restaurant recommendations are gonna be Michelin star restaurants, but we have a little bit of notes for you to an kick intro, this thing off. An intro keyword, keyword being golf. Yeah, so this is a golf resort. Those of you who are very aware of golf would probably be like, you idiots, obviously. This is like one of the oldest golf courses in the world. Maybe the I, don't know. I think St. Andrews is actually the oldest. Who knows? We don't know. We don't know. People who know golf know. But this restaurant is in the hotel. And so we kind of like meandered around outside to find it. It wasn't abundantly clear when we got there. I think we parked in the wrong place too. But that gave us a chance to kind of walk around the grounds. And it was stunning as you can imagine. And it was just really fun to walk in this place. It's not really our decoration yeah, style. Yeah, I was gonna say, listen, if you watch this channel at all, you know our aesthetic is sort of this more modern aesthetic. Uh, this is a very sort of historical golf resort, but I will say walking up and seeing that, that Rolls Royce that they oh, have yeah. parked out in the front and it was almost sunset and it just definitely transported you back to a time. And I can definitely see why people like to come here and appreciate that and, and really feel the history. All right, so you're inside the hotel, you're finding the restaurant and you are, I grabbed two. Okay. Your ZD. So your ZD. you are a baked pasta, congratulations <laughs> to you. Uh, I think, favorite morsel of all the courses that we had. I wanted so morsel did, and course to, to course rhyme there. So. A morsel of the corsel. I wanted that to work out. So at Andrew Fairley, we obviously opted for the tasting menu. That's our vibe when we go for a culinary experience. And so they bring out all kinds of different courses. Now, somewhere smushed in the middle of the courses is this ZD course. And I'm a pasta girl at heart. So yeah. even despite my gluten intolerance, <laughs> you, you can't convince me to not have pasta. And so I'm picturing, I'm obviously, I know it's a nice restaurant. I'm not picturing like a big thing. Just a big ziti. bowl of ziti with some bolognese. I knew they top. were going to do something different, but let me just tell you the absolute delight on my face when they bring out the plate and it's these little, like almost like logs of ziti stacked one next to each other so delicately. Just some little mushrooms on the side. Uh, it was such a good bite of the food. The flavor was so good. Okay, I can keyword, go for it, Carol. Let's see what other bites we have in here. We'll stop spinning it Besides so that you don't ziti. have to fight. All right, next bite was the balloon. So this is actually the end of the meal, but that's how we're doing this. You just kind of get to go on the adventure in different directions. It was kind of our anniversary. I mean, not really, but close enough. When you're at a restaurant like this, you just tell them, you're like, yeah, it's your anniversary, it's a birthday, uh, it's my quinceanera, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter, it's not actually, I'm just saying that. But it was just a really, amazing plate mm -hmm. that showed up and I'm like, is that a balloon? Mm -hmm. And it was a balloon, but it was made of chocolate dusted with like a red uh, chocolate mm -hmm. on top of it. And it was just oh, such a delicious And bite. it had the mango in- Oh, the mango inside. inside. I forgot about the mango and inside. And so the chocolate with the mango was like absolutely delicious. 
So, life hack length, just, it is your anniversary some month around You're celebrating there. something, so just tell them that. Always. Next khaki keyword is, two left in here, canapes. Oh. You only get one minute to talk about the canapes. Okay, fine. <laughs> I don't know, I've never seen this been done, done before, but they had basically like, Four, five, six. We don't canapes? go to enough fancy restaurants to know that a canapé comes out in multiple different. They just had like a whole canapé course, yeah. and so it was like all these little bites. Uh, one that is a standout is this little puff pastry fondue cheese bite thing, and you wow. just, yeah, we popped it in our mouth. The cheese melts, and we raved about it to our server <laughs> so much so that about you know two minutes yeah. later she comes back out and she's like, oh, these, these just. These Showed fell up. off the truck. These fell off the truck. Oops. And so they gave us an extra pair of canapes because we raved about it. So they much. were so well designed, so meticulously crafted, so and every beautiful. bite was just such an adventure. And our final little keyword here, the lobster. Good place to finish. At Andrew Fairley, their signature dish is this like lime butter lobster. And can I just say, uh, the theatrics that went on. Yeah. It wasn't like a ton of theatrics, but before we even got our lobster course, we saw a table that had like five or six people next to us get it. And all the servers come out with the, the little signature dish with the, what do you call it? Just like cover. A cover, yeah. And they all do it at the same time. Yeah. And it, just, there was just like a little moment of theatrics where I was like, I love it. And that's what you get at a restaurant like this. It's kind of what you hope for too, is an experience you're not gonna get anywhere else. And yeah, every bite of the lobster, like so you didn't tender. have to fight to get any of the meat out of it. And sorry for any of you who don't eat meat. Uh, but yeah, it was just a really delicious bite of food. Last but not least, we have our random keyword, your Michelin star restaurant name. I did a name theme on these two. I know, I'm sorry, but what's the name of your restaurant? Um, I know what mine is. What? Mine's food. F U with an umlaut D period. Oh, I'm sure that exists. Food. It's just food. That's it. That's all I want mine to be. I'm sure that exists. Yeah. Okay, I can't think of one. So, <laughs> so we're going <laughs> with mine, which is food. Welcome. And you have to say it like that every time. Try uh -huh. it. Food. That's pretty good. Yeah. Thank okay. you. All right, that was Andrew Fairley. Now we are going to move a little bit down the road in Scotland to the, the Newport. Newport. The first keyword here is Tay. Tay. Because you go over the Tay Bridge, uh -huh. you're on the Tay River, uh -huh. it's in a town called Newport on Tay, uh -huh. and I don't have anything else to tell you about that. So that's basically <laughs> Look at you know, with the pun. Right. Sorry. No, in all seriousness, this is, I think, part of the charm of the Newport is that you're right on the river, gorgeous views, and it's just a, a wonderful setting for a cute little casual, delicious restaurant. Keyword for Excuse new- Excuse you, khaki keyword. Khaki keyword for the Newport, artichoke. Ooh, so as a non-fan of artichokes, I do love artichokes. You do. I grew I, up with them. I do not like artichokes, and one of the courses had this most tender, delicious, buttery artichoke, and I was like, maybe I like artichokes uh, Served now? four ways. There were four Incredible. different ways that the artichoke was prepared with the short rib dish, mm -hmm. and every bite of it, I mean, it, they all tasted like artichoke, mm -hmm. let's be honest, but you don't like artichoke and you were enjoying it. And I also was enjoying it because I like artichoke. That's the thing about a really good restaurant is it can convince you to like an ingredient <laughs> that you wouldn't normally have. Like artichokes. That's right. Next keyword, uh -huh. we have upsell. <laughs> so there was a, an additional option mm -hmm. amidst a meal and you know you're at a good restaurant when they just come out and they're like, hey, do you want some more food? And that was a cheese board. And it was before our dessert course. They were like, do you want the cheese board? And we always go for the cheese board. I feel like so. this is a very European thing. Like, I don't feel like we experience this much in restaurants I in the US. I think it's a tasting menu thing. Yeah, Cause maybe. again, we did the tasting menu at the Newport and I think they always have kind of, not always, but like there's always, there's always not some always cheese to be in <laughs> the optional course. <laughs> this cheese board was like right up our alley though. It Every single one was delicious. Very good. All the little homemade crispy breads that you mm, could put on the it. Breads. And the cheeses weren't too drastic. Sometimes you get a cheese board yeah. and you're like, whoa, one of those cheeses I can't eat. These were all very mild, very delicious. Not that you're gonna like go have them tomorrow, but you, might. you should do the upsell if you get the offer. The khaki keyword for the lady. For the lady. All right. Sourdough, speaking of bread, wow, this, we did not plan this, this is working out really well. I am such a sourdough fan. You are. And I had the sourdough at Andrew Fairley, mm -hmm. and it was, I'm gonna be honest, unremarkable. It was fine, it was good. You can definitely care, tell the care was put into the sourdough. The sourdough at Newport is maybe 
the best bite, I'm not trying to be hyperbolic, mm. but it's true, the best bite of sourdough I have ever had. This is a lot coming from a sourdough connoisseur. I just I haven't, he's, he's your sourdough. cliche lockdown sourdough starter person. Yeah, so I've, you've I kept my many sourdough, sourdough going. I was sad to let it go when we moved. I almost mm -hmm. gave it to a, like gifted it to a friend. This sourdough bread was amazing. Was I can't tangy. say enough about it. It was crunchy. Oh it yeah. Was moist. There was good crumb. There was good crust. There was just a good tang, like you said, from the starter. It was amazing. Last wow. keyword. Ooh, that fell There's nicely. Such drama. Thank you. Is Caesar. Tell them about the little Caesar bite. Speaking okay. of canapes again. This is one of the more memorable bites. Again, they had a canapé course. I am just yes, really stumbling down. into canapes here. I told you I want to have like a little canapé night where we just make canapes. Uh, this is one of the most mem memorable bites from the tasting menu, which was this little Caesar salad bite. And they basically took all the flavors of a Caesar salad, but put it in a little tiny canapé. And it has this beautiful green color, yeah. the Caesar dressing. It was just incredible. It, I, it so was memorable. amazing. You just, you take a bite and you don't, cause you expect salad. You think Caesar salad, you expect lettuce and like other things. There was no lettuce. There was none of that. It was just this green thing. But it's just the flavors of a Caesar salad. So Finally, our freestyle keyword What's is, freestyle? Jason picked all of these, so yeah. I have no idea what it says. Favorite vegetable? What's my favorite vegetable? You're not allowed to pick potatoes because everyone who knows you knows that you're a potato gal. Okay. What's your favorite vegetable that you would have to pick if like you only had one vegetable to eat? Yeah. And feel free to leave in the comments your favorite vegetable if you only were allowed to pick one as well. No, and potatoes you can't pick. <laughs> Do you know what's coming to mind for me? This is embarrassing. If I had to guess? What? Oh, we should guess each other's. Okay. I would guess carrot. No. Okay, I guess wrong. <laughs> I would guess carrot for you. No. Okay, say it on three. One, two, three. Broccoli? Green beans. Oh, I know. Broccoli? Broccoli's a weird one. Oh, that's know. a weird one. You just want to have a farty party for the rest of your life? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. But I was just thinking like broccoli and cheddar soup, roasted broccoli. I love it when it's like charred on the outside. Yeah. You know what we haven't had in forever? Brussels sprouts. This is true. I feel like they haven't made their way over <laughs> <laughs> I think they're here in Europe. We'll find them. How about that? Okay. Those are three of the amazing restaurants that we ate at during our time in Scotland. They were all delicious and wonderful in their own ways, but we're gonna pick a favorite. On and the count of three. On the count of three. We haven't told each other uh, what our favorite of these three are. I think I know what pick. yours is. I think you, I know what yours is. All right. Okay. Three, two, two one. one. The Newport. Newport. Oh! What? Did you change it? I, as you were saying, I was like, I thought she was gonna say Glen Turret, but she said Newport, so I like stumbled out and saying it. Yeah, Newport. Yeah. I do think Glen Turret's food was incredible. And maybe if we had eaten at the restaurant and had maybe their coarse stout tasting menu, yes. it would have been a little bit different. But we just really love the vibe and the aesthetic of Newport, which is why I'm not too surprised that it was your it's favorite. It's like the casual with the light coming in, the looking at the river. Plus, to me, the food felt quality wise like a Michelin star restaurant, but in a more casual environment. So that's why it's the top for me. Glen, Lalik at Glen Turret is number two. Definitely do the whiskey flight. And like Jason said, we didn't actually sit down and eat, so can't totally compare. Yeah. And then Andrew Fairley was a wonderful experience and definitely being transported in time. But for us and our taste in particular, it was a little bit kind of too historical and too old world fancy, yeah. if that makes sense. So those are our... Those are our three restaurant recommendations. Hope you try them out. Those were our personal favorites. Now stay tuned for our next video from Scotland where we're gonna take you to a Highland cattle farm experience. This was so fun. So fun. We'll see you in that video. Bye.